So let's start with the backward roll. So this exercise is meant to make sure that when you do a backward roll, a common mistake is to have the head here in, in front of you and then you twist your neck as you roll. So here, the whole point is for you to learn and to develop rolling over one shoulder. So the exercise is done like this. Uh, you have your, you can actually bend your knees here. You're flat on your back, arms ex extended out diagonally, uh, head down, and now the head goes to the, to, to the shoulder of, uh, of the opposite side from where you're going to roll. When my head is to, to right, say to the right side, I will throw my legs to the left, and here, bam, I place them on the ground, and I roll up. And this is the very exercise I want people to learn before they continue with the next step. Now the next step uh, for the backward roll, you start by sitting down. One leg is under the other foot. Now the same principle applies where your head goes, it really, you really place it on your shoulder. You can also look at the opposite shoulder, whatever you prefer, but you make sure the head is out of the way. The body tilts a little bit to the side as well. And now you have the principles down of being able to throw your legs over one side. Now you just need to apply it in this position. So you tuck your, uh, you hunch your back forward. Arms are on the same side as the leg. And this leg you will have to throw over the shoulder of the same side of the shoulder. So I'm going back. I'm gonna lift the hips a bit here. That's gonna help me fall over. Make sure the head is to the side and I lift the legs over using the same principle. Hands naturally are placed here. I go on my toes so that I would maintain my, uh, my base and I push up to a nice position. So just one more time, I'll include the arms right now. So the arms, the, the arms as you go back, you are throwing the arms together with the legs which will give an extra momentum and the hands naturally place themselves on the ground if you keep them here. The next exercise in the build-up for the backward roll is you do it from standing. So now, when I stand, uh, a common mistake people do is when they place the leg far back, then the leg is in my way and it's difficult for me to roll over it. So make sure that before you roll, it's better to bring the leg closer to the front leg. And this way, there's nothing bothering your, your hips, your buttocks when you sit down. And also make sure the toes are open and not, and not posed because here it blocks you from going back. So now the leg comes to the other leg. I place the foot, I cross the legs. It has to go a bit out. It's not gonna be comfortable if I do it here. So it's here, arms forward, hunching the back, going on my buttocks and here, doing the same movement that I did before. So if you mastered the movement before, now you can add the going down from above, and that's gonna take care of the whole thing. So pretty much doing these three exercises, mastering each one of them before you progress to the next one, will make sure that you master the backward roll. Uh, of course, there are many exercises to continue to develop the backward roll, but this is building it up from scratch. Now, if we look at the forward roll, it's a bit of a more complicated issue because there's kind of two different approaches to it. And the very first approach that I introduced and I showed it in the previous video as well is uh, the fact that you're not rolling over two shoulders like this, like, like I was taught in school and presumably you were taught as well. You need to learn to roll over one shoulder. So while in the final form, you will use the whole arm and roll over the arm. First, I want the person, or, or if you're practicing it, I want you to develop the ability to roll over one shoulder rather than both. So to get used to this feeling and to not, um, to not overcomplicate things for the person in their brain to, to process too much information, uh, you need to have your legs uh, crossed. So one leg is, one knee is a bit above. Uh, toes are posed so you have a good base. I bring my front shoulder as, as, as deep as I can towards or next to the front knee. My, tuck, uh, my chin is tucked in. Here I can have the other hand on the ground. And this is a bit of a scary moment for beginners, but this is completely safe as long as you keep your head in. Uh, you have to lift your knees, lift your hips, and push them over to roll here. So now, if you manage to do this, uh, you, are, you become familiar, uh, obviously on both sides, you become familiar with with how 
it feels to roll over one shoulder. When you're capable of doing that, the next exercise, you start by, you add more of a posture. So one leg is, uh, is in front, the other leg is, uh, this time is extended. I'm placing my shoulder again next to the knee. And this time I'm pushing, I'm walking towards my hips with the foot and I'm learning to roll, including now, this time including more legs. When you master this exercise, the next one, you do everything the same, but here you're learning to extend the other hand. It's a preparation actually for a high, for, uh, for a soft high fall, but also it's a good exercise for stretching and just getting used to rolling forward. So that is the next exercise. Now, when you're comfortable with that, you could continue here developing your high, soft high fall skills. But if we're focusing on the forward roll, uh, after you do these three exercises, now it is time to include rolling over the arm, and that is a much more complicated issue, and I will explain why. So that is because, um, first of all, you need to keep your arm straight. You need to make sure the arm doesn't bend, and uh, if it bends, mm, the reason it bends because there's a big distance here, and I'm afraid because of that distance and I want to narrow it down, so I bend the elbow, I hit my elbow, and then I hit my shoulder because it's not round, it's painful. You obviously don't want that to happen. So you have to make sure you keep your arm straight. One of the ways to do that, you turn your hand towards yourself. You keep it straight, don't push the, um, don't push the elbow in, that's uh, not good for your, um, uh, for your arm, for the, lig for the ligaments. And uh, so you keep it a bit round, but it's pretty much, it's, 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 it's a form, it's a full form here. You're not bending it anymore. The other hand, it's going to hold your weight as you lift the back knee, all the weight goes on this arm, so that way you can control your body. But now, something I avoid, I don't ask students to do this roll straight away on a, just, just a regular tatami, because, uh, it's dangerous. It's, it, the person may really get easily hurt. So what I uh, normally do, I place a big mattress, but in this case, since the mattress is not around right now, what I will do, I will just simply take one of the mats and I will put it on top of the other mat. And now it has much more... Uh, has much more support, so if I roll, you can actually even have as much as free mats. But now as I roll, uh, if I do a mistake, if I, if I still accidentally uh, bend my elbow and I hit the mat, now there's, now there's a much softer base which will suck the, uh, the impact. So I have some extra, extra cushion, cushioning here, and now I do everything that I showed to you before. I use, I place the hand, I use the other hand, and I lift the knee, and a common mistake is wanting to go down. The, your intention has to be forward. As I said, this arm is completely straight, lifting your hips up and moving forward, and make sure you roll through the entire arm from, on, on, a, on each bit and piece of the arm. And uh, so don't start here. Start here. So notice I will place this this moment, this this position first, and then the rest of the arm, and the the roll happens quite quite softly and nicely. Now, when I'm familiar and comfortable at doing this, the next exercise will be to, to again use extra cushioning, and uh, to, will I will ask the student to do it standing. So. A common issue here is from here, the tatami is far, but a great trick which you can, you, you can choose to use it, or if you're advanced you don't need this, but for beginners it's very useful, you bend your legs. So notice how much closer I become to the mat, and now as I place my hands, I'm actually much closer. So I'm bending those knees, I'm placing them on the ground, and I'm doing the same exercise. So this is what you need to become comfortable with later. So now when you become comfortable with these exercises using extra cushioning, you can remove it. And what we do now 
is you come back to the exercise on the ground. So doing the same exercise, but this time without an extra mattress. The mattress is both uh, a comfort for, bot for physical body, but also for a psychological comfort. You're gonna have to face the music, but you do everything exactly the same. It's just by using the mattress, you make sure you, you smoothen out your forward roll. And now doing the same, you can do it without a extra cushioning. And the last step is you do exactly the same standing. So bending your knees and rolling forward. Uh, there's some details you need to become familiar with when you roll from here from the top. Uh, one of the main secrets ingredients is you reach with the arm. So, so you're not just throwing yourself out there. When you fall, you reach with the arm and you want to connect with the, with the tatami as early as you can. So let's say by placing this hand and then again, you make sure you roll through the entire arm. That's what's going to save your butt. So, so here, my, I'm moving my hips, I'm moving my body forward. I reach out for the mat, I connect, and I roll over. So in the next episode, we will look at how to, what exercises build up both the front feather fall and also the soft high fall. Just to let you know again, if you are interested to take a look at the at the Akira online, uh, Akira Kemi uh, online course that I created. I'll leave the links both in the description and in the top of the comments. And also just if you live in UK or if you're around, I will be teaching an Akemi seminar on September 22nd. And I'll leave the links and the details there as well. Uh, the spaces are limited, so make sure you register and pay as early as you can so that you would have a spot. And until the next video, thank you for watching, and I'll see you there.